as far as the, the whales and the right whales and so forth and the new restrictions on closures and uh, modifying our gear to, um, for, for breakaways and so forth, is, uh, it all seems to be helping. They're talking about buoyless gear and, and so forth, which I'm not in favor of. I'd rather, I think that the closures and not letting us, you know, when they have the closures and not being able to fish at that time makes more sense because um, I just, I think the technology isn't there yet for buoyless fishing. Uh, so the pressure uh, to save right whales is coming down hard on the fishing industry. Um, and the consequence of that, of course, is that we are seeking uh, some solutions to the fishing industry's uh, problem that they've visited to right whales. And that has been many different sorts of things, but the only one that seems to hold a lot of hope, as difficult as it is, is ropeless fishing, fishing without the traditional ropes leading to the surface and between traps. I mean, you're looking at piles of rope here that is all been modified from, you know, 15 years ago or 20 years ago. This would have all been floating rope, and now it's all sinking. And there's buoy lines that have weak links in them and markings and so forth for whales. So we do everything we can to comply and and uh, avoid any. Uh, entanglements and if there is entanglements they all have the uh, breakaways and so forth on them so we don't want to catch them and I don't want to kill a whale I think they're pretty awesome animals. So addressing the human causes um, they are what we we call often industrial uh, causes of mortality uh, basically fishing activity and shipping uh, ships striking whales and uh, fishing activities, usually catching them in their ropes or wires or whatever. There are some many details as to what specific kinds of fishing and shipping do that, but generally it's those two big causes of mortality. This buoyless fishing might be okay in the future, but at the moment it's uh it doesn't make financial sense with the equipment that's involved in it. I think the initial efforts for, for ropeless are going to require uh, subsidies. Uh, more than subsidies, are the, the federal government is probably going to have to find ways of buying most of the new gear that comes in. Whether that continues uh, once uh, ropeless fishing becomes widespread, And then there are a bunch of other problems with it beyond the technology. Uh, one of the big problems with ropeless fishing uh, is that there will no longer be marks uh, at the surface of the sea indicating where their gear is. And on the one hand, that means um, that uh, the fisherman going out offshore will have to make sure he doesn't drop his gear on other people's gear. Uh, and in, a, in an equally big problem, other fishing methods are going, which, de which depend on seeing buoys at the surface to avoid uh, the gear on the bottom. Uh, those um, uh, operations like um, otter trawls, what we call dragging um, the bottom, uh, will drag right through the middle of traps and mess everything up. You put something on the bottom, now you have to have, what about the next guy? He's not going to know it's there or, a, a, you know, other fisheries like fish draggers or scallopers that want to fish in an area and there's buoy gear down there that they end up catching because they don't know it's there and all of a sudden they're, they've got problems because they get all this tangled up gear that they're messing with on a boat that they didn't even know was there before it was all well marked. Most fishermen are going to avoid other people's gear if they see it. Well, I, you know, I think the fishing community is in a tough position. Uh, they do not want 
whales to get tangled up in their gear. There's no gain for them. And now these days, there's a huge loss. Uh, the approach taken by to cut down on mortalities uh, in ships, but especially in fishing, is to close areas to those activities. And that's no help to the fishermen. I think that there's been, with the work we've done, there's been less entanglements locally than there used to be. Um, a lot of the problems I've had with the, the whales have been ships or bigger lobster gear or uh, sport boats that have hit them while they're traveling, you know, traveling high speeds. And um, I think for the most part, fishermen have done the best they can to avoid interaction with the whales. We're in a winter closure right now for four months to try to avoid that. Given the problems that fishermen confront, um, all of the conservationists and should be all of the fishermen are looking for a solution to the entanglement of, of large animals, particularly right whales, in fishing gear. And that possible solution, which is ropeless fishing, uh, seems to be the one that we all ought to put our weight behind. That said, it changes the methods used by fishermen considerably. It will, but it also turns out that it probably is not something that's going to have a big impact in the very near future because it's still under development and it's not a simple, simple problem. I think, you know, to try to go out and fish for a day and try to, for me, to try to go on a computer and try to push a button to see, get the buoy to pop up and then uh, repack this thing to reset the gear is a little much for me right at the moment. Yeah, it would be like me telling you if you're going to go do your job, but it's going to take you twice as long or three times as long to do the same job you did before. Now all of a sudden we have to put all our gear on a, some type of map so everybody can see where your gear is. And in fishing, you know, some of the edges is to be able to find a new spot or try something new. And then all of a sudden now this is all just common information.